Hi everybody, uh, today we'll talk about data governance and especially about data lineage. So uh, I believe you know that data lineage in Duomo it's available when you click on the um, uh, when you click to the data set and inside data set there is a tab lineage so you can see what data sets or data flows uh, has been produced or impact may impact your final data set right but what if you need to this information in the data set and what if you need to to this information for all data set in your instance i will show you today and for example this kind of uh, visualization you can uh, retrieve in my final data set where you have your leaf data set id all dependencies what output data set id produced this leaf data set id with parent data flow IDs and all inputs separated by comma. So let let's start, and to sh uh, and I will show you how I produced this final output. So first of all, um, I believe you know that uh, Domo has multiple Domo stats or governance connectors that allows you to provide metadata about your instance. So today I will use governance data sets and govern governance data flow details. So actually I will need only two of them. So first uh, data sets uh, has a list of um, uh, has a list of data sets in your instance and we will loop uh, through this list and for each data set ID we will consider it like leaf data set ID and we will produce additional rows which will give us uh, all uh, data lineage for this particular data set ID. So this data set ID is pretty, uh, is pretty trivial. Uh, so each row corresponds to one data set, data set ID, and then uh, we have all dimensions that describes use this data set. Uh, data flow details. Uh, this is more tricky. Uh, it's not one row per data flow. Data flow details, uh, the main uh, uh, interest of it is that it has uh, N rows for each input and output. So uh, as you can see, there are a lot of like duplicates. Uh, and let's, um, let's take, for example, yes, uh, one example, uh, 43, uh, 43 data flow ID. Yeah, and then uh, we see that data database processing it's uh, magic. So there are four rows, uh, which uh, gives us information about four inputs or outputs. And then if we scroll uh, right, yeah, we see that there is one input and three outputs. And then uh, scroll right, yes, S uh, we have input data set ID, one input data set ID, and then uh, three output uh, uh, data set IDs. And uh, this output data set IDs, uh, uh, so each row corresponds to either input uh, data set ID or output data set ID. Great. Uh, let's uh, uh, let's uh, show. I will show you how I could produce uh, this um, this final uh, this final data set. Uh, yeah. So we will use magic ETL. First of all, I will I will suggest you to up to move down, and I will explain you later. Uh, later. Uh, uh, one of the um, uh, one of the transformations needed for particular use case. So now we have two inputs: uh, governance data sets and data flow details. Mm -hmm. uh, we pre-select uh, columns. Uh, so for data set, we'll need data set ID and name, and data flow uh, details. Actually, we'll need only three columns. Data flow ID, input data set ID, and output data set ID. And actually, that's all. And then uh, we connect everything to Python script. And Python script uh, will make. Uh, so, what I'm trying to do, I will uh, describe you the algorithm. So, data set contains the list of data set. So idea is that we are going through each data set ID. We consider it like leaf data set ID. 
And then from this leaf data set ID, we're trying to understand, okay, is this output of any data flow ID? If yes, great. Then get, uh, get me data flow ID. And what are the inputs? So I will add row for each input. And then for each of this input, I will request the same function. If that input data set ID is output of any data flow ID. Because in Domo, <coughs> In Domo, you may have a uh, data flow, right? With inputs and outputs. And each input, it can be also output of any data flow. So how many layers we have? It may be one, it may be two, it may be 20. We don't know for now how many layers it has. So for that reason, I will use a recursive function in Python, uh, which will uh, call itself so many times which is necessary uh, and at least to those i uh, uh, to this level when it has uh, uh, it has uh, parents uh, parent data flow ids and it will go uh, upstream until to the connector level so in the end of the day uh, i will show you example i found in domo dojo so we have d uh, dw data set calendar which is a result of uh, of the data flow with three inputs, and then uh, one of the um, uh, one of the outputs is also uh, one of the inputs is also output of another data flow, and also we have uh, oh look at this we have a recursive data flow, so recursive data flow in Domo it's when input equals to output. So yeah, it will be also interesting to cover this use case because uh, it may create you infinite loop. So let's take a look to the code and for the coding I will use... Uh, yeah, so I will use Python script uh, and all my Python script uh, is written here in Python tile. I will show you uh, in the description of this video, you will see the blog uh, link. Uh, and then and there you can see, uh, you can copy paste uh, my code. Um, let me find... Uh, up, uh, yes. So to debug and to explain the code, I will use uh, Jupyter Workspace. Actually, it's a recent feature that has been added uh, uh, quite recently, yes, uh, to Domo. Uh, so here you can add input data sets. Uh, I added governance data sets and data flow details. Uh, I will show you quickly. Yes, you double click on your input uh, input uh, data set and it generates, uh, directly generates a code. So this is already all pre-generated by Domo. So, yeah, so let me check and I will print uh, the head uh, of each uh, data frame just to just to check if everything is working fine. Great, I have the access to one uh, data frame to another data frame. Great. And then uh, I have written the function append row. It's pretty uh, simple, which just concatenates add the row to data frame. And the most interesting part is here. Uh, this is my function get line h before I define my df result, which is schema expected schema of my produced data data uh, data frame, where I have leave data set id, output data set id, which will equal to leave data set id for first iteration, parent data flow id if it's the case, and then all inputs divided by comma. So let's check. So this is get line get line h function, and it's uh, if you remember it's recursive function. It will be called from inside uh, because we don't know how many layers. So I need I need to define the same pattern, the same functionality, which will work for for one, and then uh, for all other layers, uh, go deep into the from this data set upstream. Great. Um, so first of all, I'm checking uh, in this code. Uh, I'm checking. Uh, I'm getting the data flow ID. So if my data set is equal to my output data set ID, then uh, get me data flow ID. If my uh, data flow ID is uh, found, I get my DF inputs. 
so all input data set id and i am joining them using comma i define new row and then i'm just appending this new row to my final result data frame so if data flow id is none is null right then i return i'm exiting from the function if not then i make another loop and i'm iterating on input data set id and this is really uh really important scene to avoid recursive flow so for recursive flow is you know input uh, id equals to output data set id so i'm adding this uh, condition to avoid infinite loop as soon as it has it will work perfectly and then um tuck, 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 and then i'm just producing my df result let's check for this dv data set calendar so we have this id and let's check how it works right great so now i am uh, i'm executing my code and then i would like to check up for this particular radio okay great so it has uh, four rows yeah actually uh, and it works fine you see it's uh, uh, and exactly the same that I have here. Uh, am I prefer to work for this one? Yes. Okay, great. So I have leave data set ID, which is equal to my output data set ID. It's a parent, uh, it's a child of parent data flow ID uh, 48. Let's check. Okay, it's DB calendar. Uh, and this is a child of DV calendar demo. And if I click in on it, it's data flow 48. Great. Uh, then let's come back. So, and it has one, two, three inputs. Let us check. Yes, it has three inputs. One, two, three. Great. And then uh, we have this one, two, three inputs and uh, this particular output data set id is a child of 47 data flow and as you can see this id is equal to this id so uh, i'm detecting uh, well so this is recursive function which uh, has uh, uh, one input and uh, its ID is 47. Let's check this information. We are coming back to the lineage. Uh, we have exactly this uh, another uh, data flow with one input and one output. And its ID is 47. So its ID of 47. And it has one input and it writes to output and as you can see input is DV calendar demo data oh, I'm just showing you the uh, the ID uh, starting by 1DC and it's also here the same uh, data set so if I'm coming here 1DC so it's it works perfectly great so now yeah so now you can see so we produced uh using this code so as i said it will be shared in the description uh this python um and uh, this is my uh, right so this is my data flow and uh you run it it runs very really quickly it runs about 20 seconds i can show you up uh, Yeah, here we are. Dataset lineage, lineage. Yes, you see, uh, 17 seconds. Yes, and one uh, last thing that I wanted to cover with you is that for uh, governance uh, data flow details, there is one particular thing that uh, I wanted you uh, to let you know is that. Uh, it doesn't handle uh, it doesn't have the same behavior as for uh, as for uh, ETL engines um, for example uh, for magic ETL for MySQL so for all data flows uh, it handles well it has uh, one row per 
per input and warp one row per output. Uh, however, for data fusions, and as you can see, for data fusions, it's um, it behaves uh, differently, and I uh, I added additional treatment for data fusion case, and I will show you how I did it. So as you can see, for Magic ETL, for example, for MySQL, data flow ID is uh, value from one to uh, its incremental ID. However, for data fusion, hmm, it's uh, it looks like it's not data flow ID, right? It looks like more data set ID. And this is what I find out if we, for example, uh, uh, filter for stock uh, uh, J real estate offset, we see uh, two rows for this data fusion, right? Uh, so following the following uh, following the same strategy that we had for Magic ETL, we expect to see okay, two rows. It's one input, one output. But finally, no. It's two inputs and one output. So, and as uh, when we scroll right, right, we see uh, input data set ID, it's correct, it's filled, but output data set ID is not filled. So, this is what I uh, am trying to do for data fusion. I created another branch in um, uh, data set lineage. I created another branch where I'm artificially add. Uh, and new rows for output data set ID with the same uh, with the same ID as data flow ID because actually it's not data flow ID it's data set it's output data set ID it's this is how data flow details report handles data fusions which might not be 100% uh, correctly but I will fix it for you and Yes, and what I'm doing, I'm filtering my rows. Uh, so for I'll, I, I will run the preview, so I will show you also uh, what it will look look like. So on the first stage, I will um, I will make data processing type equals to data fusion. So I'm selecting only those rows that uh, are on data fusions. Then I pre-filter, um, I take only those columns that I need, data flow ID, input and output. Right, so preview is ready. So this is my data flow IDs, but actually it's output data set ID, inputs and outputs. Uh, I'm adding formula uh, where I actually I'm clearing input data set ID, I make it null. And for output data set ID, I put data flow ID. So it looks like like this. And then I'm just removing duplicates because you remember we had two inputs. Uh, so actually we'll need to deduplicate to only one row. And finally, we have only five data fusions in this instance. And I produce output data set ID. And then on the next step, we just need to append append this new rows for input output data set IDs for data fusions to governance data flow details. As soon as it's done, you just uh, don't forget to reference uh, data flow details with data fusion, this style. So it takes into account uh, the new updated uh, data flow details including data fusions output it, uh, output data sets IDs. Okay, great. Uh, that's all on my side today. Thank you for watching uh, my video. I hope it was helpful. Please uh, put your likes, put your comments if you have any questions and uh, stay tuned for new videos. Thank you. Bye.